interacting with the natural world in a productive way should be fun. It shouldn't be something that's annoying or it shouldn't be something where you're, you're getting stressed and disturbed. But a lot of people do, especially over things like weeds. Weeds are just plant elements that fit into particular niches. In every square metre of soil, there can be up to 2,000 potential seeds that will germinate, given the right conditions. Now, those conditions vary. So, if we burn the landscape and we have a big fire on top of the soil, if you step back and watch what happens, the weeds that germinate are weeds that body, their bodies are high in potassium because the fire burns off potassium. The germination condition here, which is the important thing, not the weed, the weed is only the symptom of the germination condition. The weeds, the, the plants that come after fire are harvesting potassium from a potassium deficient germination zone. If instead that same piece of land we compact and knock all the air out of the soil and compact it very, very hard and step back, different weeds germinate. Now we get dandelions in lawns and deep tap-rooted plants as a common function of decompacting germination condition. The plants that germinate on compacted soil have deep tap roots and their function is to decompact the soil. Nature's in no particular hurry. When that plant dies, that long taproot is a compost corridor into the soil, a perfect infiltration mechanism for air, nutrient and water. If we go the other way, and on that same piece of land, we plough and plough and till and dig and loosen the soil and keep it loose for a while and then walk away and watch, we don't get fireweeds now that harvest pot potassium. We don't get deep tap-rooted decompactors. We get plants that have a very dense, fine hair root that hold the soil together. Their germination condition is soil that is too loose and susceptible to wind erosion and is easily washed or blown away. These are hairnet roots. If the soil has been overworked and overworked and it needs to recover and it needs more organic matter, which typically the tropics often do, and it's very easy to overwork those soils, then the first pioneer plants, the plants we call weeds, are usually nitrogen fixing plants, plants that are legumes, the beans and pea family, which have root attachment bacteria on their roots which are high in nitrogen that bring the nitrogen content up. Once that nitrogen content's up, off you go into succession towards a climax ecosystem of very sophisticated plants and animal interactions. But the initial stage, the one we should be most interested in is the one we get most stressed about. Weeds don't germinate in compost. High quality compost will only germinate sophisticated, high quality forest trees or high quality rainforest trees or woodland trees because the soil condition is so good, there is no germination condition for those reparative weeds. Let's make sure we are friendly to our weeds and learn the lessons they have to teach us about landscape repair. From the weeds and the lessons they tell us to the cover crop and the lesson we apply. This is a, a colony of rhizobium bacteria, rhizome meaning root, and they associate with this particular plant. In this case, it's a lupin, a white lupin cover crop. And they live on the root. They're not part of the plant, and they take starch from the plant, which it makes freely with photosynthesis, 
and they give back nitrogen. So these type of plants, the peas and the beans, the legume family, they're high in nitrogen because they get it freely available from the nitrogen given to them from these rhizobium bacterial colonies attached to the roots. Now they get the nitrogen from the nitrogen in, in the air, the air that's in the soil. That's why it's so important to have nice, loose, airy soil, soil that's not compacted, so the bacteria can get their nitrogen supply and give it to their plant and exchange, in exchange get their carbon for free. And that's starch and carbon, the building blocks of life. We're on a swell where we've spread a cover crop. And we've got three different types of cover crop here. They're all nitrogen fixing plants. We've got a vetch and a lupin and a pea. And they're very important to stabilize the soil after the earthworks. But this is an important function of root interaction. The exudates of the roots feeding the organisms. These organisms in this soil won't starve. They've got lots of partners in these valuable little cover crops. They also fix nitrogen, so it's a fertilizer in itself. But very important that they're feeding and interacting with the soil microbes. So if we add compost or if we add compost tea or any kind of organic fertilizer, we're making sure the plant sugars and the interactions with the roots are happening with our cover crop. Crucial. This is the first layer in the succession. The very first set of plants that start the process of repair so that we can go on and establish productive trees, support species, and put this into a food forest planting along this swale. The very first start is the ground cover. It starts the process of repair and starts the interaction of the organisms in the soil so they can continue to feed the landscape. 